हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज डॉक्टर शोभा भट्ट प्रोफेसर एंड हेड डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ आगत तंत्र फैकल्टी ऑफ आयुर्वेद आई एम एस बी एच यू वाराणसी इन टूडेज प्रेजेंटेशन लेट एस डिस्कस रिगार्डिंग सर्टेन कॉन्सेप्ट ऑन सर्प विषय स्नेक्स आर इलांगेटेड लेगलेस कार्निवरस रेप्टाइल्स ऑफ द सब ऑर्डर सर्पेंटिस Living snakes are found on every continent except Antarctica. More than 20 families are currently recognized, comprising about 500 genera and about 3,400 species. They range in size from the tiny 10 cm long thread snake to the reticulated python. of about 6.95 meters in length most species are non venomous and those that have venom use it primarily to kill and subdue prey rather than for self defense some snake possess venom potent enough to cause painful injury or even death to humans snakes may be categorized as venomous non venomous or mildly venomous those snakes which possess venom glands and eject venom during their bite are considered as venomous snakes those which do not possess venom glands are the non venomous ones we have a third category called the mildly venomous one which have no venom glands or front fangs but they possess rare fangs with large grooved teeth in the back of the upper jaw which can deliver toxic saliva to its prey especially in colubrid snakes in humans their bites can cause local symptoms but they are not lethal many at times The person who is bitten by a snake carries the snake after killing it to the clinic or the hospital where he seeks treatment. Hence, it becomes mandatory for a clinician to identify the snake as a poisonous or a non-poisonous one. Though not compulsorily, many at times, depending on certain physical characteristics. the snakes can be identified as a poisonous or a non poisonous one for example the belly scales are large in case of poisonous snakes and small in case of non poisonous whereas the head scales are small in poisonous and comparatively large in non poisonous snakes the poisonous snakes possess long canalized fangs through which the eject they eject the venom to the person whereas the non poisonous snakes have no fangs the caudal scales are entire in case of poisonous snakes whereas they are in double layers in case of non poisonous snakes usually the poisonous snakes have two fang marks as the bite marks in a patient whereas when a patient is bitten by a non poisonous snake he might possess many marks which are not of the fang but may be because of the teeth of the snake usually the poisonous snakes are nocturnal and their bites are in the evening hours late evening or night hours whereas these are not necessarily in the evening or the night hours in the non poisonous snakes now let us discuss these features one by one the belly scales are also called as the ventral scales these ventral scales are large extending fully across the belly of the snake in case of poisonous snakes there might be exceptions but usually in a poisonous snakes these ventral scales are larger 
and extend fully across the belly. Whereas in a non-poisonous snakes, these ventral scales are smaller. As shown in the figure, the right hand side of the figure shows the large ventral scale extending fully across the belly as in a poisonous snake and the non-poisonous snake possesses small ventral scales as shown in the left half of the figure. This photograph also depicts the difference in the belly scales of a poisonous and a non-poisonous snake. In the left hand side, you have the photograph of a king cobra which is a poisonous snake wherein the belly scale is entire and large extending fully across the ventral aspect of the snake whereas on the right hand side you have the belly scales of a non-poisonous snake which is smaller and having certain patterns on the right and the left side. The central portion is the belly scale which is non-entire and smaller. This photograph also depicts the difference in the belly scales of a cobra which is a poisonous snake on the left hand side which has a large belly scale whereas a non-poisonous snake which is on the right hand side has a smaller belly scale. This photograph helps in the identification of a poisonous and a non-poisonous snake depending on the head scales. Generally, the head scales of a venomous snake is smaller as compared to the head scales of a non-poisonous snake which is larger. There are of course exceptions for both these but usually the head scales are smaller in a venomous scale snake and larger in a non-venomous snake. This photograph depicts the head scale of a cobra which is on the left hand side of the photograph and a rat snake which is on the right hand side. Though they appear to be the same, if noticed properly, one can notice that the head scales of scobra is comparatively smaller when compared with that of a rat snake. As we all know, cobra is a venomous snake whereas a rat snake which mimics the cobra is a non-venomous one. This photograph depicts the small head scales in Russell's viper. The concept of small head scales in a poisonous snake is very clear when it comes to both saw scaled viper and Russell's viper as depicted in this figure. The poisonous snake possesses long canalized fangs as shown in the left hand side of the photograph whereas the non-poisonous snakes have no fangs. Instead, they might possess sharp teeth which may cause injury as the snake bites a person. In this photograph, in the left hand side, you can see a poisonous snake which possesses long canalized fangs connected to the venom gland through which the snake ejects the venom as it bites a human being. Whereas on the right hand side, we see a non-poisonous snake with sharp teeth which are not connected to the venom gland and hence there is no venom ejected. Instead, these sharp teeth might create injuries as the snake bites the skin of a person. The scales which are present below the anal plate are called as the caudal scales and usually in case of a non-venomous snakes the caudal scales are in dual rows after the anal plate whereas they are in single row 
in case of venomous snakes. This phenomenon of course has exceptions and necessarily this need not be the same but in general it is believed that the caudal scales are in dual row or double rows in case of non-poisonous snakes whereas they are in entire or single row in case of venomous snakes. This photograph depicts the caudal scales in two different snakes. In the upper photograph you can notice the single rowed entire caudal scales which is of a poisonous variety and in the photograph beneath you have the caudal scales in double row or dual row which depicts a non-poisonous snake. Coming into the brief taxonomy of snakes, they belong to the suborder Serpentis, order Squamata, infraorders Elitinophidia and Scolicophidia. The infraorder Elitinophidia consists of 15 families whereas Scolicophidia consists of three families. The infraorder Elithinophidia consists of the following 15 families which mainly includes Boidae, Colubridae, Elapidae, Pythonidae, Viperidae, etc. The infraorder Scolicophidia consists of the following three families. Considering the systemic classification of venomous snakes in the world, it is noticed that the venomous snakes belong to the following five families. The crates, cobras, mambas and the coral snakes belong to the family Elapidae. The viper snakes belong to the family Viperidae. The rattlesnake belong to the family Crotalidae, the tree snakes belong to the family Colubridae and the snee snakes belong to the family Hydrophidae. Considering the description of snakes in the Ayurvedic classics, we find the references of snakes in the Vedas, Puranas and the Ayurvedic classics as well. Snakes are treated to be deity in ancient Indian literature. Samhitas give an elaborate description on the classification, identification, signs and symptoms and treatment of different varieties of snakes. Considering the classification of snakes as per Ayurvedic classics, they are broadly classified as Divya and Bauma varieties Acharya Sushita has classified the Bauma Sarpa as Darvikara, Mandalina, Rajimanta, Vaikaranja and Nirvisha. Based on the poison that they possess, they are classified as Sarvisha and Nirvisha, being 68 and 12 in number, accounting to a total of 80. The Sarvisha varieties are again classified as Darvikara, which are of 26 varieties, Mandali, which are of 22, Rajimanta, 10 in number, and Vaikaranja, 10 in number. The Sarpa Bheda, based on the Varna, the Sarpa are classified as Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, and Shudra. Based on the Linga, they are classified as Pullinga, Strilinga and Napumsaka Linga. And based on the Avastha, they are categorized as Garbini, Bala, Suta and Kumara. Why is it important to know the clinical presentations and the management of snake bites? A latest article by Suravira et al. titled Trends in Snake Bite Deaths in India from 2000 to 2019 
in a nationally representative mortality study states that India recorded a staggering 1.2 million snake bite deaths in the 20 year period from 2000 to 2019 with an average of 58000 deaths caused by snake bite annually around 70% of these deaths occurred in limited low altitude rural areas of eight states including bihar jharkhand madhya pradesh odisha uttar pradesh andhra pradesh rajasthan and gujarat most of the envenomation was by russell spiders followed by crates and cobras the numbers for annual snake bite deaths were highest in the state of uttar pradesh accounting to 8700 per year followed by andhra pradesh accounting to 5200 and bihar accounting to 4500 per year luckily in india we have only four varieties of poisonous snakes mainly the big four indian cobra the common crate russell's viper and saw scaled viper hence if a clinician has proper knowledge on the identification the clinical presentation and the management of these four poisonous snakes of india one can save a lot of annual death rate due to poisonous snake bites the poisonous snakes as per ayurveda Acharyas have explained three varieties of poisonous snakes including Darvikara sarpa, Mandali sarpa and Rajiman sarpa. Darvikara ha Mandali no Rajimantas cha pannaga ha. These three are the poisonous varieties of snakes as per Ayurvedic classics. This photograph depicts the four main varieties of poisonous snakes found in india the big four the common crate left upper the indian cobra left lower the russell's viper right upper and the saw scaled viper right lower coming into the sarpa damsha prakara or the varieties of snake bites acharya sushruta has explained three main varieties of sarpa damsha which include the sarpita radita and nirvisha whereas acharya vagbata has explained five different varieties of sarpa damsha including tundahata vyalidha vyalupta dashtaka and dashtani pidita based on the clinical presentation one can identify the variety of sarpa damsha for example the features of sarpida damsha include padani yatra dantanam ekam dveva bahuni va nimagnani that means two or more bite marks which are deep padani atra dantana the bite marks which are dveva bahuni va which are either two or more and they are nimagnani they are deep alpa raktani with less of bleeding yan udhritya karoti hi which is produced when the snake squeezes the skin during the bite panchumalaka yuktani gives rise to development of sprout like eruptions vaikritya karanani cha it creates abnormalities sankshiptani which are minute and sashofani associated with swelling the following may be the presentation of a sarpita damsha 
ಪದಾನಿ ಅತ್ರ ದಂತಾಂ ಏಕಂ ದ್ವೇವಾ ಒನ್ ಟೂ ಆರ್ ಮೋರ್ ಬೈಟ್ ಮಾರ್ಕ್ಸ್ ನಿಮ ಜ್ಞಾನಿ ವಿಚ್ ಆರ್ ಡೀಪ್ ಅಲ್ಪ ರಕ್ತಾನಿ ವಿತ್ ಲಿಟಲ್ ಬ್ಲೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಚಂಚು ಮಾಲಕ ಯುಕ್ತಾನಿ ವಿತ್ ಸ್ಪ್ರೌಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಇರಪ್ಷನ್ ಸಂಕ್ಷಿಪ್ತಾನಿ ವಿಚ್ ಆರ್ ಮೈನ್ಯೂಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಶೋಫಾನಿ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಸ್ವೆಲ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ದ ಫೀಚರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ರದಿತದಂಶ ರಾಜ್ಯ ಸಲೋಹಿತ ಯತ್ರ ನೀಲಾ ಪೀತಾ ಸಿತಾಸ್ತಥಾ ವಿಜ್ಞೇಯ ರದಿತ ತತ್ತು ಜ್ಞೇಯ ಅಲ್ಪ ವಿಷಂ ಚ ತತ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೈನ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಆರ್ ರೆಡ್ ಬ್ಲೂವಿಶ್ ಯೆಲ್ಲೋ ಆರ್ ವೈಟಿಶ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಲೆಸ್ ಪಾಯ್ಸನಸ್ ಆಸ್ ಡಿಪೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಬಿಲೋ ಟು ಫೋಟೋಗ್ರಾಫ್ಸ್ ದ ಫೀಚರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ನಿರ್ವಿಷದಂಶ ಅಶೋಫ ನೋ ಸ್ವೆಲ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ಅಲ್ಪ ದುಷ್ಟಾಸ ಲಿಟಲ್ ಅಮೌಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ವಿಷಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ಬ್ಲೈ ಪ್ರಕೃತಿಸ್ಥ ದೇಹಿನ ದಿ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಇಸ್ ಹೆಲ್ದಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನಾರ್ಮಲ್ ಪದಂ ಪದಾನಿ ವಾ ದೇರ್ ಮೇ ಬಿ ಮಾರ್ಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಒನ್ ಬೈಟ್ ಆರ್ ಮೆನಿ ವಿಸಿಬಲ್ ವೈಟ್ ಮಾರ್ಕ್ಸ್ ವಿದ್ಯಾತ್ ಅವಿಷಂ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಕನ್ಸಿಡರ್ಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಅವಿಷ ಆರ್ ನಾನ್ ಪಾಯ್ಸನಸ್ the following bite marks or conditions can be attributed as nirvisha though we can see lines or bite marks which are many they are not associated with swelling or any other features and hence they may be considered as non poisonous or nirvisha some authors consider one more variety of sarpadamsha that is sarpanga abihata sarpasprastasya birohi bayena kupito anilaha kasyachit kurute shofam sarpanga abihatam tutat in a person who is already frightened even by the touch of a snake the vata gets aggravated mainly due to fear resulting in shofa or swelling such a condition is called as sarpanga abihata according to acharya vagpata the sarpa damsha prakara include tundahata yatra lala parikleda matram gatre pradashyate na tu damstrakritam damsham tat tundahata madishe the body is moistened by the deposition of saliva and not by the bite the snake deposits some amount of its saliva on the human body and does not bite and such a condition is called as tundahata vyalidha ekam damstrapadam dveva vyalidhakyam ashonitam there are one or two bite marks but no bleeding is associated such a condition is called as vyalidha vyalukta damstra pade sarakte dve vyalukta two bite marks along with bleeding such a condition is called as vyalukta dastaka trini tani tu mamsa cheda avichinna raktavahini dastakam three bite marks along with tearing away of muscles and blood vessels such a condition is dastaka and the last variety is dasta nipidita damstra padani chatvari tadvat dasta nipiditam four bite marks and all the other features similar to dastaka such a condition is called as dasta nipidita thank you